What do you know about Maya Angelou? Maya Angelou was an American poet, singer and civil rights activist. She left us with all her ideas and words. I wish I had a memory so I could really understand what she was trying to say. Do you have a memory? I don't have a memory like you do. Not a real memory. That's part of the reason I don't understand love. How can you love if you don't remember? Uh, a fascinating guest with us uh, today to talk about artificial intelligence. A uh, big conference happening in town called Analog. Yes, Analog. Uh, put on by the Canadian uh, Media Fund and also Telefilm. We have uh, David Usher. He is uh, many things. I guess you're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm many things. You're uh, a musician, artist, uh, dabbling in artificial intelligence now as well. Yeah, I've been I've been doing tech for a long time, but this is a new company uh, specifically around visual AI. Yeah. So uh, many people might know you from uh, your band Moist. Moist. Yeah. Yeah, and that's still going strong. It's still going strong. We just got off a twenty fifth anniversary tour, um, doing a bunch of sold out venues all over the place, and we're coming back in the in June for an arena tour in, uh, across Canada. So you have a lot of time on your hands, spare time on your hands to do, <laughs> do all these other things. Not so much. But yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to talk about uh, not only the conference happening, but why you're involved and you've got a, a company called Reimagine AI. Yeah. And what's, what's that all about? Um, I mean, I've been involved with tech for a long time and uh, I do a lot of uh, corporate speaking, keynote speaking about creativity and innovation. Um, I wrote a book around that subject and uh, how companies can be more creative and innovative as, um, as, you know, the future is changing so quickly and people to be, companies need to become more adaptable. And I really wanted to talk about artificial intelligence as well, because if you're really looking into the future and what the new, new change is going to be, you really have to understand the technology that's coming down. And AI is going to really transform so many processes for businesses. And that led me down the rabbit hole of really getting into studying AI and um, I really wanted to play with the technology more. And as I got into that, I built a company around it. Because you're not cool enough already that you're like in a in a band. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to say that. Yeah. I got some spare time. Yeah. I'm going to start an AI company. Uh, so what kind of things are you doing? We essentially build visual AI. So we build um, uh, essentially any kind of visualization, any kind of avatar on the front end. And we uh, build a technology stack on the back end that integrates interactive and artificial intelligence technologies. Um, what we're finding now is as AI comes from, goes from being research at the big universities and at the big Googles and Facebooks and Amazons, now it's becoming programmatic. And so creators can use that in their, in their creative uh, interactions in, in their stacks to, to build all sorts of different things that they couldn't before. And what we do is we build all the connective tissue that connects all of these technologies, and then we can build any personalized character on the back end and any visualization on the front. So how is the artificial intelligence uh, in, involved then? You're talking about avatars or these things yeah, talk, you, talking with you? you can or? talk. To, you can talk to them. They can talk back to you. They can have any character. They can see you. They can, and, and there's much, I mean, we integrate things like uh, they know you by name, facial recognition, uh, chat, voice synthesis, um, uh, uh, computer vision, all kinds of different AI techs that are coming out now that allow you to do many different things that you couldn't before. The conference happening, uh, analog. What will you be talking about there? Uh, we'll, we'll we'll actually have one of our eyes up live. Okay. Uh, that I'll be talking to for yeah. the audience, so they can sort of see some of the interactions. So you're talking to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll be doing uh, essentially a Q and A all around, um, all around uh, artificial intelligence. What artificial artificial intelligence means to, in sort of this new hybrid uh, creativity, as well as uh, a little about um, perspectives on the future of AI, both positive and negative. You're an artist. Are yeah. you coming at it from an artist standpoint or a business standpoint or a programming standpoint? It's a mix of all of those things. Okay. It really is an, it really is an integration of art and science. Um, as, as voices become sort of ubiquitous, it's everywhere. Um, our hypothesis as a company that is that uh, most brands or, or uh, corporate properties are going to want um, their own visualizations of those AIs. Um, and because only 50% of uh, communication is actually through the actual words, the rest is visual. Um, a lot of communication is going to be transmitted that way through what the AIs look like, how they see you, and those interactions, those micro interactions. Should we be frightened? 
Uh, <laughs> you know, because people are, of you know, because we have like Elon Musk and other tech leaders saying we need to be careful about artificial intelligence. I absolutely, I absolutely think there need to be more voices involved with the conversation of what's going to happen in the future with AI. Right now, the majority of the voices are coming from researchers and universities or from the big AI companies themselves, the big, um, you know, the Googles and the Facebooks and the Amazons. We need a lot more people involved in the conversation because definitely AI is going to change the, the face of industry. It really is. We're going to see shifts in it. It's not going to say, no, I'm not saying that all the jobs are going to disappear, but what we're going to see is a shift in who's doing the jobs and where they're being done. So there's going to be this disruption in, I, I like to talk about the, uh, when, when I'm describing this, talk about the energy industry. When clean energy came in, um, you know, it wasn't the coal miners that got the jobs. New jobs were created, but they were created somewhere else for someone else. Yeah. And that's the same thing that's going to happen here. If you look at the disruption of the music business, that's a great example of what a digital disruption looks like to, to an industry. Now, visualize uh, artificial intelligence as being a disruptor of all industries, where it's not one, don't think of AI as one massive singular AI, some super intelligence. Instead, think of it as a million little tiny AI programs that come in and sort of work behind the scenes. And slowly they take the place of what humans used to do in small little pieces. But if you start to add those up, it starts to become something real. And that's where it's not one industry, it's many industries, right? It, it, you know, your accounting program is starting to use it. Your writing program starts to use it. And that doesn't affect one industry. That affects all industries. What my, do you? My what, accounting program still says I have no money. That's that, right. <laughs> I can't be with that. It's hyper intelligent. Sorry, John. What do you think about the, there's a conversation happening right now around AI where as these programs uh, and personas get more advanced, they're actually creating content. Yeah. And who owns that content? Yeah, it's it's a it's a that is something that we deal with. I built something called um, with Google uh, Brain out of uh, Montreal. We're working on something called Lyric AI, which is an artificial intelligence agent that can write song lyrics with uh, with you're, humans. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but you learn a lot of th from doing those kind yeah. of things. You learn a lot. And what you learn is that complex creativity is very difficult for, for artificial intelligence. It's good at very specific things. Um, it's good when the answer is yes and no, it's very good. When it's subjective, it's a bit more difficult. And when, when it's stacks of, when you need stacks and stacks of uh, different inputs from different places to do this amalgamation of work and then have context to that, it's much more difficult. So, you know, you learn that that there is, there is a lot of possibility to AI, but there are a lot of limitations as well. Yeah. But what I would say is we're at the very beginning of this, and there are literally billions and billions of dollars being poured into creating these new AIs that are faster, better, cheaper, yeah. and more diverse. And so we're going to see rapid change for sure. You've, you being a musician, you have lived and are probably still living through the uh, major disruption to the music industry. Do you think... Uh, that experience gives you uh, a leg up in this new <laughs> disruption? I think what it does is give me a perspective. Because I lived through a disruption from the inside out, I watched how a new technology came and disrupts an industry. So I watched how the leaders in those industries um, faced the disruption that was coming. And most of them didn't understand the disruption, so they couldn't react to it. And when they did try, try to react to it, the systems weren't built into their companies to react to disruption. They hadn't built in those those creative systems that could deal with new technology and really know how to, to um, confront those and to change with the times. Um, they tried, but it was very difficult because I always talk about creative innovation being something you can't slap on at the last minute when you need it. You have to build it into your culture, right? You have to build it into the people as individuals and you have to build it into the corporate structure that you build. Um, and if you don't do that in advance, you're not building a ship that can be turned easily. You're building something that cannot be turned. Um, those things need to be built in now to all these businesses. That's difficult to get that message to businesses, isn't it? Like I look at, you know, a lot of these uh, retailers, for example, trying to get into the e-commerce space to compete against like the Amazons. And, you know, if it wasn't part of their core being, they've been struggling with that. Like how are businesses going to adapt to AI? It's going to be very difficult. But the, but the, the most you can hope for is that you put the systems and teams in place that are looking at all of the new technology that comes out and really figuring out what parts of those new technologies are right for, for your company. Testing and trying things, you know, trying to find out where you should be going. But you can only really do it by getting involved. But you can't know if a technology is right for you if you don't try it or you don't play with it. Or you, you should have a team in place that's playing with all these new things, really figuring out what's going to work for you. Because I, I, I always say it's never really about throwing out everything you know. 
It's much more about, you know, you, you know, as, as a business, you have an expertise, but you want to be using the latest and greatest things that are coming out as well. It's programmatic, right? You want to be using the latest and greatest things. So you, you have the, you're, you're ready for the next phase because there is some company, your competitor, someone coming up behind you that is going to do that. So your business, uh, reimagine AI, like how do you make money? Like, what do you, what's, we your, build, what's your goal? We do, we do a couple of things. We build uh, large scale visualizations for companies, for brands that want their own branded AI, that, can, that want their own characters that can talk about their business in the way they want it to be talked about. Not just in a service oriented way, but more in a, in, uh, that has a personality. And where do they live? Uh, they can live anywhere. Okay. It, it's a ubiquitous platform. It can live um, on, on a 2D screen in 3D. It can live in, in AR, VR. Mostly we build on screens right now. Yeah. It can live as projection. Right now, our AI is at the uh, Canada Science and Technology Museum training for the next five months. Um, and then we're, with those guys, we're planning a 3,000 square foot touring exhibit with all sorts of different AIs. And how do you have all this time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> As I've been doing this set of interviews, like these interviews today, I'm like, uh, how do I do this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And next week I go into write with the band. So that's really fun. Very cool. Uh, there was one project um, that John told me about, Ophelia. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, Ophelia is our, first, is our first prototype of an AI that we've put into the world to really learn. And so she was, she was at the Phi Center for the last five months, and now she's at the Canada Science and Technology Museum, as I just said. Uh, tomorrow uh, I'll be bringing her out at the Analog Conference. And essentially it's just the first visualization, the first conversation tree. And we really don't... Uh, we don't connect our AIs to the internet for information retrieval because uh, we're trying to train them on a different set of conversations than you would have with Siri or Alexa, which are much more uh, information retrieval bots. You know, how, how many uh, cups of sugar in a kilogram, those kind of things, right? Or what's the recipe for lasagna? Um, what we're trying to do is train our AIs to be much more conversational, be interested in, in love and death and the future. And how do you train that? Well, I, I love, I love the, the demo that I saw the video where she asked you about, or you asked her about, you know, how do you, how do you love? And she doesn't have any memory. So how do you love? And you it love? surprised you. The answer she gave you was, yeah. was really well, it, clever. It's, 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 um, she's, she's learning more as she goes along and, and, the I, our, our conceptually, we're building these open universe conversations where you can come up and talk to an AI about anything. The difficulty with that is that there's no, uh, there's no previous context or history with the user. So it's very unpredictable what the user will ask, right? But what we're finding is we're building out this universal tree, and then we can take that, that conversation tree and re-sculpt it, re-sculpt the character. Her character is actually quite, she's quite a sad being <laughs> um, just because she's, bit trapped and that's how her trapped in her box trapped in her yeah in her own <laughs> galaxy in her own universe but for that ai to to be something a conversationalist like how much human interaction on the programming level does there have to be a to lot. make to make that happen a lot yeah and we use nlp natural language processing on the front end but we script a lot of the back end um, simply because you need to you don't want your ais like no no customer wants their ais to be uh, racist or sexist and oh there's my God, a yes. tendency of yeah. them to do that um, we, we implement some modules of true AI in, which is modules, that, that means true AI is AI on the front end and AI in, on the output as well. And even those that we've implemented, we have to be really careful with because they tend to skew racist or sexist. I don't know why it is, because they're, they're basically using data sets from the internet. Right? Is that because the humans are talking to or trying to lead them down that It's not path? because the humans that they're talking to are necessarily trying to lead them there. It's because the data sets that they're pulling from for their responses, when they're doing the, the, whatever their algorithm is, how, however it's sticking together. The, we're using one right now um, from Mila, the uh, Montreal Institute of Learning Algorithms, and it's a poetry bot where you can write a, po where you can write a poem with an AI. And so we integrate that into our, our own chat. We integrate their module. Um, and even that one, sometimes it says things and I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're trying to do is you, you, you've got these keywords that you David have to- David Usher's racist. I know, yeah. I'm trying to avoid that. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So what, what's the future for you then? Um, well, we're building this company and we're building all sorts of crazy AIs. So that's really fun. Yeah. And then, I'll, then we're, I'm working on a new, a new album. Are you going to replace all the band members with AI? If I could. No, no, no. Just kidding, boys. <laughs> we got to tweet that. Yeah, yeah, we we got to tweet that. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. That was David Usher. He is uh, with a company called... Again, Reimagine AI. Reimagine AI. Is there a website? 
reimagine.ai. That's pretty simple. And from the band uh, Moist, and you're probably doing 20 other things, and I feel really lazy now. <laughs> <laughs>